In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to segment a 3D model into parts to help you minimize the loss of detail or undercuts that can occur when importing the model into your Aspire software. To get started, we're going to create a new file. This file is going to be a single-sided job. It'll be 12 inches by 12 inches by 2 inches thick. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface and our XY datum will be the bottom left-hand corner. Because we're going to be creating some 3D content, we're going to need to make sure that we use a very high modeling resolution. And for your material settings, we can just use Canadian Maple. And we'll click OK. In order to demonstrate this process, we are going to need a piece of 3D content that we can import into your Aspire software. I've chosen the Knight model from this project that's available on Thingiverse. This is a great example of a model that you may want to cut at a larger scale, but some undercuts will occur between the ears if you decided to cut this on a traditional 3-axis CNC mill in either a one-sided or a two-sided job. This project was created by Stanley Erland. I've decided to only include in the 3D model of the night with this tutorial. If you'd like to go ahead and download the full project, feel free to follow the link that I've included in the files that come with this tutorial that'll bring you straight to this full project where you can download everything that you see here. In order to import in our 3D model, we're going to need to use the import a component or 3D model option. So let's go ahead and click on that. We'll be instantly brought over to our Windows File Explorer where we can navigate over to wherever our 3D content is stored. For me, I'm going to use the file that's stored in the Files folder that comes along with this tutorial. This file right here, the wcc underscore night.stl, we're going to select that. Now keep in mind when it comes to importing in a non-standard 3D component into our software that we rely a lot on how that model was created in the software that it was made in. So we're going to need to keep that in mind. So we're going to open that up. Get that model will import right into our software. So on our left hand side, we have all the different options that we have when we're going to be importing in and transforming the initial 3D model. Um, there's a couple different ways that we can look at the initial orientation. We can use the buttons over here, or we could go ahead and use the gizmo that's right in the 3D view. First of all, let's look at the buttons here in the initial orientation on our left-hand side. So we can go ahead and import this in by rotating it around, looking at the different back, top, and face. Now, this may seem a little bit odd because, again, of the way that this model was created. The top may actually not be the top, but you can definitely get a good idea of the orientation that you're going to end up with. You also have um, the rotation above the uh, around the x-axis, so we can move 90, 180, go back to zero again, plus 90, and plus 180, and then back to zero again if we'd like to. Now, right in the 3D view, we have our transform gizmo. We've got the three orientation uh, rings here that we can either left click on and pull. So holding down the left mouse button, you can pull it around. It will lock into the 15 degree increments or snap to those 15 degree increments. Makes it a little bit easier for you to dial it in if you'd like to. Uh, also, what you can do is you can choose one of those hoops and we can type directly into our entry field. So if I put in minus 90 degrees and press enter, then it'll automatically do that for me. We can also use the ball in the center here, which would give us sort of an uh, a organic orientation. Sometimes if you have a really crazy 3D STL model that may not have an obvious front, back, or a side, then you might want to use this to kind of get that laid out properly. If after a bit you've got your orientation all out of kilter, you can go ahead and check one of these two circles over here, and that'll put it back in the original orientation it was when it came in. For us right now, we're just going to click on the red circle and go minus 90 and then press enter, and that will lay our knight down on its side. The next thing we're going to do is just to make life a little bit easier for us, we're going to center our model. So let's click that. And you see that now our model is centered. And we can look at this wireframe box that's in the center, and that represents our actual job size or our material size that we set up when we first started our job. So that is that 12 by 12 by 2 inch workspace or job space that we have. 
So we want to try and fit our knight into that space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the longest dimension over here and I'm going to change this down to 10 inches and then click apply. And that should get it right into the center of that job where it belongs. And that looks really good. Now we have a couple of different options at the bottom here. We can position an import or we could go ahead and segment it if we would like to. We're going to look at position and import right away. So let's click that. Now this is our position and import dialog. So we can take a look at our 3D model and you'll see this purple or blue, light blue modeling plane here. We can decide where our model is going to fit in, in respect to that. And we can slide it up and down by moving our model up and down throughout that plane. If we want to write in the center, we can just double click on that center little line there and that'll put it right in the middle. And that's kind of where it belongs for us right now, I think. We can create both sides if we'd like to. If we uncheck that, we could discard the data that's below the zero plane. For now, we're gonna go back and just leave both sides turned on because we like to have both sides of that model. Now let's have a look at the highlighting the undercuts option. If we turn that on, you'll see anywhere that our three axis CNC machine can't reach and where we'll be ultimately filled with pixels if we decide to um, import this model in as it is right now. So the areas that we're going to have some undercutting are going to be around its ears, which I totally expected it to have happen. So let's import that in as it is right now. And when we do, we brought right over to our 3D preview and you'll see that we've created two components. We've got the one side of the night and then the other side of the night. Just move those into the middle of our job for now. And if we have a look at the ears, you'll see where the space that was negative space underneath the ear has now been filled with pixels. So if we did want to cut this as it is, we could put it back together again and then we could hand carve out between ears if we wanted to. Or we have even a better option where we could go in and segment it and cut those ears on their own and put them back on our night in the end. And that way we'll be able to preserve those undercuts and also get the detail that's on the other side of those ears if there is any. To do that, we can go over to our components tab and we can see that there are two parts of the night if we right click on one of those and go down to re-import, we brought right back to our import 3D model and position dialog. So we can go back one more. And now we can think about segmenting it. So let's go ahead and click on the segment option. And now we're presented with all of our segmentation options. On our left hand side, we've got a dialog that's opened up with all kinds of different options and we'll go through all of those. And in our 3D view, you'll see that our positioning gizmo is back again and we have this green plane. Now this green plane we call our segmentation plane. Wherever it's placed, when you choose to create a segment, then it will cut your 3D model in half along that plane and creating a combination of segments, you will minimize the amount of undercut you have and the more detail that your CNC machine can possibly reach. So for right now, let's have a look at our dialog. At the very top, we can select a mode. Right now, we're gonna stay with edit mode, but there's also a layout mode, and we'll look at that in a bit. We have a very manual way of positioning the segmentation plane, by either typing in numbers or using these arrows to move the plane up and down. You can rotate it around different axes. You can reset the rotation, and then we can go ahead and segment it. And again, that will create two segments along that plane. Now, right in the 3D view, we can do a lot of exactly the same thing. We can use this blue handle with the cone on the top to move our plane up and down to position it where we want it to be. We can use these handles to rotate it around if we would like to. And we can also select it and we can type in a number if we'd like to and press enter. Let's reset that rotation, put this back to where it belongs. And let's think about how we're going to segment this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to segment or cut off his ears if we can. So to do that, the best way to do that is going to be to select this red rotation ring and type in minus 90 and press enter. And then grab the blue arrow and drag it up to the top. 
and we'll position it where we'd like it to be. The nice thing is that you can see through this transparent plane and put it exactly where you want it to be. Now it's okay that we're going to be segmenting off the top of his mane. We can attach that or reattach that to the horse's head in a minute. So let's choose to segment that there. You'll notice as soon as we did that in our segment viewer, we now have two different segments. The selected segment you can see right in the 3D view, which is the ears and the top of the mane. And if we choose this other segment, you'll see that it is the rest of the night. If we select the parent of those two child parts, then you can see those put back together again so we can get an idea of where those parts belong. And this is going to be really important if you get a more complicated segmentation job. The next thing we're going to want to do is to segment the ears. So we want to actually go back to the, the ear segment. We can choose it from the list or we can just double click in the 3D view. And then we'll position this plane so that we can segment that left ear away from the main and right ear. So let's segment that. Perfect. And then let's go back to the other side and we'll rotate the plane just a little bit. Pull it through and then we can segment that. Now this is the very top of the main. So if we go back to our parent again, you'll see that all of these parts have been colored differently. And what I'm paying attention to is the top of the mane and the body of the horse. So that looks like it's the lighter purple. So I can grab this purple here or this segment and I can pull it down and drop it on top of the horse segment or the rest of the night. And you'll see that now it's healed it back to the top of the night where it belongs. And now if I'd like to, I can go back and I can rename all of these different parts. And you might want to do this as you move along, but for me, this was a pretty simple segmentation job, so I don't need to worry about that too much. So let's just rename this one Ear 1, and then we'll rename this one Ear 2. And the last thing we're going to want to do is actually cut the knight in half from the top of its head to the bottom of its base. So to do that, we're going to choose that segment. I'm going to grab the red rotation handle. We'll put that back to zero and press enter. And that should be back pretty much in the middle of the model where it belongs. We can just type in zero there to make sure it gets placed back where it should be. At the bottom of the segment viewer, you'll see that each segment has a thickness listed. That way you can keep track of how thick your segments are going to be and make sure they fit inside your material. And then we can segment that and we'll have two pieces of the horse now, the left side and the right side. Let's go back and look at our knight. There we have it. All the parts that we need now to go ahead and to consider importing that into our job. At the very bottom here, we have some other options. We can create back face caps. We can resize our material block to fit all of our different segments, which might be important if we have too many segments to fit in our original material block. So we're gonna turn that on. And we could also create boundary vectors. And those might come in handy if you're gonna do some post work on your 3D components once we import those in. But for right now, we're gonna leave that turned off. Let's go up to our layout mode now and have a look at that. When we click the layout mode, you'll see that we have a the option to actually lay these parts out. We can double click on it and we can look at each part individually if we'd like to, which is nice. We can turn it up on its edge and we can make sure that they lay flat to our modeling plane. You'll see that our ears don't quite do that. So with this ear selected, I can move through my segment positioning here until I find the right position for it to lay flat, like that. That looks great. Let's do the same one with the blue ear. Perfect. Now that I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and import those into my job. And you'll see now I've got all the parts that I need. I can reposition those. I can put them on a different sheet if I'd like to. I can do all kinds of stuff with that. Once I cut them out, I can put them back together again, glue back on my ears, and I'll have the perfect looking 10 inch tall night, maybe display on my desk. 
Now let's say I wanted to go and put this into a two-sided environment. Maybe I have material that's thick enough that I can actually go ahead and cut these two parts together, um, but do a double-sided flip. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is to make sure that I turn my single-sided job into a double-sided job. Look at all my different options here and make sure they're set up properly for my jobs. I'm going to zero off the same side. I'm going to leave my flip direction the way it is. This all looks great and I can click OK. And now let's go to our component tree. Note that any of the segments that we renamed when we were segmenting our job retained the names as their component names. And we're going to select any of the components here or right click on it and we'll go to re-import that. Now, as I said, I think I probably could cut this body. So the horse torso, the head and the base could be done in a two-sided environment without too much trouble at all. So to do that, I'm going to go over and look at my segment viewer. And I can select the parent for those two segments. I can right click on that and I can delete my children. And when I do that, it will recombine or heal those two parts back together again to give me this one part. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. Let's go back to my full night again. That's perfect. Now let's go into my layout mode for a second. And now you'll see that I, my horse or the rest of my night is looking a little funny. So let's select that. And we're going to select the orientation of that. So, it lay, so it's laying flat like that. That's all right. And then I can move, I can move my modeling plane or move my model so that the modeling plane is right in the center of that, where it belongs. And now when I choose to import that in, you'll see that this is the top side. If I look at both sides together, I now have a bottom side of that model. Now I could go ahead and set up some dowel positioning and get it ready for a two-sided flip on my CNC machine. In the related videos section below, I'll add in three videos, one to show you how to create a 3D roughing toolpath, a 3D finishing toolpath, and how to create a double-sided job. And I hope that that's giving you a little more insight in how to use the segmentation tool.